to episode 116 of the Sussex by the Sea podcast. I'm your host Chris Saverick and on the SBTS we try to get a flavour of our local football here in East Sussex but in particular the club I follow for my sins, Hastings United. On episode 116, former youth boss Super Gary Elphick talks the parting of ways with our club, the excellent work he's doing at Worthy and what he thinks of the job that he's doing at our beloved club. Then we have James Doe of the excellent Non-League Day initiative. This year's Non-League Day, 23rd of the 3rd, 24. Keep that in your diaries. He talks about what's happening this year. He fills us in on all the exciting events coming up for this year's day. And then we have the SBTS It's Me and Prem Fan Roundtable, packed with fans around the league. Enjoy, SBTS fans. And now we're to Super Gary Elfie. Right, it gives me great pleasure to introduce episode 116. This is the interview with the wonderful, super Gary Elphick, uh, former Hastings boss, uh, wonderful gentleman. Can't say enough about him. Love him to death. Gary, how are you, mate? Yeah, very well, Chris. Yeah, and uh, hope all like yourself and, and all the other fans are doing well. So, um, yes, yeah, all good, mate, my end. Good, good, right. So, Gary, um, these days, he's a defensive coach at Worthing. Worthing having an excellent season. Uh, second in the league last time I checked. Uh, Yeovil, a few points ahead, but you never know. So, talk to me about the whole thing at Worthing, Gary. Yeah, it's just, um, I know the manager, Adam Inchwood, really well. We was um, sort of together when we was progressing through uh, Brighton. Um, and, obviously, he heard the news that, uh, of my departure at um, Hastings. So uh, he contacted me, we had a coffee, uh, and we, we spoke through a few things and um, he said, like, we'd love you to come on board at Worthing, which, uh, to be fair, Chris, was a no-brainer because um, I was at a little bit of a, a loss, sort of lost end. Um, I've always sort of had involvement with football. So for someone like himself to to ask me that question was, um, was great. And, um, yeah, I jumped at the chance. So, uh, yeah, it's been great uh, thus far and, you know, hopefully we can seal that playoff position and, and sort of keep ch- uh, closing down on the Oval. I mean, in terms of the job role itself, because um, I know obviously facilities-wise is a lot better than what's at Hastings. I mean, what, what are you doing in terms of your work with the players? Uh, so probably compared to what I was at Hastings, I was a lot more hands-on sort of at, at the start of the season, taking sort of a defensive structure, if you like, uh, what it looks like behind the ball. Uh, technique, uh, foot pans, things like that. So um, yeah, it was it was great. And then, but obviously, which is why I took the role on as well. Uh, I've, I've done some passing. My, my, my sort of coaching uh, experience has improved, and um, sort of picked up loads of stuff from uh, Adam Winchwood and also the other staff members there. So um, it's been great. It's been more hands on than um, than I was previously at Hastings. So whatever happens, it's like anything in life. You you say yes to something, and sometimes you learn from that experience and you you can take stuff on from that job and 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 take it into whatever happens in the future so um yeah it's, like it's been brilliant a bit like marriage, exactly Gary. that you know me and my wife we get stronger and stronger so oh, she's she in the room <laughs> <laughs> no nah, she can't hear me um, so yeah. uh no nah, but it's it's it's, yeah. it's just every little experience especially when you work with good people uh, good human beings, as I always say, then you've got half a chance in life. So um, it's been brilliant up to now. Okay. Just talking of good human beings, I know, you know, we spoke before, I know that Ben Ben works with you in, in your, your full-time bit of business. You, uh, yeah. Plumbers, wasn't it? You, I you were, Plumbing, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Business. Try to be, yeah. yeah. I've, there's two things I've got to ask. The, the first one is, you know, did you give him any parental leave uh, <laughs> when uh, the, Pope, the Pope number two appeared? I, he, he got looked after. Don't worry about yeah. that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I've aged about twenty years, but he got looked after. Yeah. And and secondly, obviously, 
uh, you know, and uh, there's there was there tears on the pillow when obviously the Jurgen things just come out that Jurgen, uh, obviously Ben's a massive uh, Liverpool fan. Uh, yeah, we had a minute of applause today at work before we hung the boiler. <laughs> so uh, yeah, he's gutted to be honest with you. Like I suppose so many other sort of Liverpool fans. So uh, yeah, it's a bit of a shock, but um, yeah, Jurgen, we trust anyway. So yeah, well, we go. well, yeah. So yeah, we so moving on from that then, um, Gary. Uh, what I mean. I'm not. I'm not. Well, I've, we obviously we've spoken about this before. This is quite a difficult yeah. sort of subject to broach, really, because me personally, I'm, I thought it was shocking y- y- your exit from Hastings. Um, yeah. What w- wasn't happy about that at all? Um, yeah, it's a difficult one. Yeah, I think obviously there's, there was politics involved. Um, it's, it's an odd one because it, it's, it seems it was it wasn't that that far ago you know far away that I departed Hastings but it seems like it was a lifetime ago now in a weird way because there's been so much that's happened at the club but um you know the uh, it, it's and and to be honest with you I'm really torn with my feelings at times about that but it's it's gone now and it's done but when I look back and I look back now with a much calmer mindset if you like because emotions are not obviously that that running high, that much yeah. higher than they did then but um, you obviously see a man in, in Darren Bernie that I, I, factually he he put in a hell of a lot of money into that club, so that's number one. And I think myself, previous players, management, whatever, will uh, I've always got to respect the money that he did put into the club uh, for the running of the club. But then obviously there's other things that occurred. Probably wasn't always uh, fully. What would I say? That obviously, it's a hard one for me to. Basically, when I, I was manager, you can you, I basically have to look after my communications with him and other staff members. And at the end of the day, it, I didn't feel that it was right. The budget that I got offered to take Hastings into the to the new season was was probably probably 60 percent less. Which for me, being a, just a straight down the line kind of guy, it was hard for me to sort of speak to those players that had done so well for the club and sort of probably tried to reduce their wages by 30, 40 percent, some of them. So first of all, that put me in an awkward position. But also there, there was sort of he, he didn't feel that I'd done a great job, which that that frustrated me. He, he did say that to me on the phone that he felt that I, I hadn't done a great job. So I knew basically my budget was getting reduced a hell of a lot. I knew that he felt that I hadn't done a great job, whether he truly meant that or was trying to push me out the door because I was under contract as well. Only he can answer those questions. So it's a, it's a, it's a real torn one for me, Chris, because I know how much time, effort and money he did spend. But the way it ended, I still can't get my head around some of it. But obviously, I don't think about it much now because life moves on. And um, I just, all, I, all I know is that I was honest to each and every individual that sat in front of me in that dressing room to staff members and that won't ever change and that's the way I run my life. So but obviously, yeah, that that was it on the on the political side of things. And those were the two major factors that why I left Hastings is because it was it was on my it was my call, which is was always important for me because I've always felt that I you know, I'd always be that kind of guy that knew if my time was up at a club, I'd walk away for either good reasons or bad reasons yeah. and I'd be honest with everyone. Um so when you get told that he didn't think that you'd done a great job and that your budget was going to get reduced as much as it was going to, then, I, you know, unfortunately I had to come to that decision to leave Hastings. So, yeah. And then obviously it was a little bit heartbreaking for me seeing what happened that, because I, and I knew it was going to happen, but the club for me has taken several steps backwards and they're, they're, they've got forwards now. And that's brilliant for what Ags has done, which I know he would do because as I say, he's, he's one of the best managers I ever played under. Um, and I know the whites and other people in the background, the voluntary workers as well. I think it's always important to mention them. There's a real solid foundation behind Hastings Football Club, and that's why the club will never you'll you'll never see the demise of Hastings because there's too many good people in the background. Which that for me is great to see because for them to be sick from the league from what they've had to experience at the start of the year, which for me tore the whole heart and soul out of the football club. That's nothing short of a miracle for for what I've seen really. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, as a, I mean, I've said this to multiple fans. I mean, obviously, you know my feelings on on the situation that happened with yourself, and and other fans do, and 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 I've I've had, I've had ear roll about it. But um, yeah. in terms of the the whole Paul Barnes thing, um, I, I I I think it's a, a I would say well, I'm going to say a miracle that we are in a situation we are now. How it has turned around, how we were able to change that situation, and obviously get Aggie in who. 
yeah who's, who's done a you know got the got, you know even got like getting dicko back um which yes is 100%. Great. it's great to see um do you, i mean what was your i mean what's your I, yeah, it was I, upsetting and angry to be honest with you to, to, from looking from the outside in because you're thinking we had uh fantastic local lads at that football club uh both old and young um which, once again, I, and I always alluded to in my interviews, I always praised Aggie for what he had set up. So when I took over Hastings, it, it, a lot of it was set up because of, because of Aggie. So I'll always um, speak highly of him. But what I felt that maybe I added, uh, or not added, but just sort of got back to, is when Ags left, it, it needed someone just to, to be that chewing gum, basically, just to mm. keep everyone together and to, to bring the heart and soul back into that football club. Um, and I felt that I'd done it. I felt that the staff I bought in done it and the players had done it. And most importantly, which will always be the case, the fans. Uh, we used to go into the clubhouse afterwards and we were as one. I know sometimes I'd be a little bit grumpy if we if the performance wasn't great or we'd yeah, got well, beat, which yeah. I always, you know, yeah. <laughs> but um, that you, you see you've gone from that sort of uh, atmosphere um, to then hearing that the players are, are training in London, uh, there wasn't many local lads uh, in the dressing room. It's 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 upsetting, and I I always had a um, always when I spoke to Darren, I always mentioned about having like a satellite training centre, maybe sort of in Tombridge or somewhere like that, because I knew the higher we go up, you, you, the sort of catchment area you've got to expand and you've got a bit. But to to do two sessions away from Hastings and uh, to get a, to lose like the cane pens and people like that. That that's that's where I was really frustrated because Hastings should never be letting go of players like that because that that's a sort of another Tom Chalmers if you like he came Dickos Ryan Worrell's Pope but you know they they it was so good at that club that they should have been there for several years and enjoying themselves and that was the the hardest thing to see is that I yeah I, I read a lot of things and I'm not on the social network but Ben obviously. When I worked with him, he used to show me a lot of like social postings on players have left for money and all that. And it, it was so untrue because even if my budget was sort of cut down, maybe 10, 10, 15, 20 percent, I could tell you now that the majority of players would have stayed. That's how good that dressing room was. And um, it's the best dressing room even previously when Aggie was there first time around when I was playing to managing. Nothing will ever come close to that Hastings dressing room. It was incredible. Well, and, and they're, obviously they're going, they're going all right now. It's, it's, it's yeah. I mean, it is a miracle. I, uh, you know, I don't know, I don't know if you, if you keep in contact with Aggie at all. Or if... uh, I spoke when he got the the job originally. Um, or we, we spoke for twenty minutes or so. Uh, we don't, we uh, obviously we don't sort of keep in touch as much as we probably should do. But uh, it's a bit of a funny one. It's, it's football because. You always think like, and even in like family life and everything, you always think, oh, I need to ring him and that, and then just yeah, you just manic. Go by. But he knows what I I think of him. I think he's the best man for the job because it needs someone like him that's going to keep an eye on the academy, bring these players in, and they need to punch clever f with the finances that are there or not there. And for me, you could not have got a better candidate than Chris Agger, and and he's proven that. So um, I, it's just. You know, life's all about timing and Aggie was ready to go back into first team football. He's had a, a great experience from Brighton. I know the, the coaches that he's worked with there, they talk highly of him and vice versa. And Aggie would have come on again from his first experience. So once again, Hastings are only going to get a better better coach, better manager. And he's going to be more experienced at boardroom level now, how to deal with chairmen, to, to deal with staff. And uh, it just keeps evolving, doesn't it? But as I say, you could not get a better person in charge of Hastings Football Club at, at this current time, I don't think. Okay, go. Well, thanks for that. Well, firstly, though, I ain't going to let you go yet because I want to know what about yourself? Are you going to dip your toe back in management? Uh, I, I'll be honest with you, Chris. It's, uh, it's uh, I haven't had nothing come my way. I'm, as I say, maybe I, I, I sort of, uh, I don't really sell myself enough really on social network or anything like that because I just, I, first of all, I haven't got time. And second of all, I, don't, I just, I think sometimes you need a chairman to come to you a little bit maybe as well and see what you may have done and haven't done. And that might work with or against me. But Title I'm winner, not, I'm, Title yeah, winner. Yeah, yeah. But I'm not, I'm not in no rush. And um, mm. it's been brilliant for me to work with Worthy and Adam Inchwood and that because, as I said, about Aggie even going to Brighton first time around, you, you learn off different people. It's been brilliant to work under someone again. 
um, because obviously I have to mould myself differently. I must like good cop, bad cop, be that message between the dressing room and management, which I wasn't used to at all. So um, whatever happens, I'll be better off for it. And um, it's, it's been great doing it. Well, listen, Gary, you're always royalty at Hastings, mate. You know, no, no, I'll, I'll, I will. You, I'll, I'll definitely catch a game soon. Try and, and, uh, try and come by. Yeah, yeah, 100%, mate. Top man. And uh, yeah, just uh, thanks to all the fans and that. And I hope, uh, as I say, wish them all a happy new year because obviously I didn't come on the Christmas one and that. And uh, yeah, he blew me yeah, off that I, one as well. Yeah, yeah. sorry, mate. Sorry <laughs> about that. Right, uh, yeah, no, I'd like all the best for the, the second half of the season. And uh, I wish Ax and all the lads all the best. Yeah. Okay, Gary. Well, listen, you take care, mate. Yeah. Top man. Thanks, Chris. Cheers, okay, mate. Good to speak to you. Top man. Good. Bust a bust. Hot shit. Check it out. Hit you with no delays of what you saying, yo. Silly with my nine milli with the dilly, yo. When I be on the mic, yes, I do my duty, yo. While up in the club like we while in the studio. You don't wanna violate, nigga, really and truly, yo. My main thug, nigga named Julio. He moody, yo. Type of nigga that'll slap you with the Tulio. Bitch, nigga, scared to death, act fruity, yo. Fuck that, look at shorty, she a little cutie, yo. The way she shake it, make me wanna get all in the booty, yo. Top bitch, just hit the banging bitches and videos. While I'm with my freak like we up in the freak shows. Did you with the shit, make you Feel it all in your toes. Hot shit, got all you niggas in wet clothes. Style my metaphors when I formulate my flows. If you don't know, you fucking with lyrical player pros. Do like you that. really wanna party with me? Let me see just what you got for me. Put all your hands with my eyes to see. Stay buck violent in the place to be. If you really wanna party with me, let me see just what you got for me. Put all your hands with my eyes to see. Stay buck violent in the place to be. If you really wanna party with me, ain't all we trust. What? Yo, it's a must that you heard of us, yo, we murder us. Uh. A lot of niggas is wondering and they curious. What? How me and my niggas do it, it's so mysterious. Furious, all of my niggas is serious. Uh. Shook niggas be walking around fearing us. What? Front nigga like you don't wanna be hearing us. Nope. Gotta listen to how radio be playing us. Uh. 30 times a day, she done make you delirious. What? Damaging everything all up in your areas. Yeah. Yo, it's funny how all the chickens be always serving us. Uh. All up in between the ass when they wanna carry us. Uh. Hit your Good, then I hit them off with the alias what? Various chickens, they wanna marry us Yo, it's flip mode, my nigga, you know we bout to bust uh. Seven figure money, the label preparing us no. Bite the dust instead of you making the fuss what? Niggas know better cause there ain't no comparing us no. Mad at us, niggas, is never we fabulous yeah. Hit my people off with the flow, that be marvelous uh. Oh shit, my whole clique victorious yeah. Taking no prisoners, niggas, it's straight up warriors uh. Why you feel it that I know you be feeling so glorious uh. Then I flip and reminisce on my nigga notorious Who you really wanna party like that? Head honcho of non-league day, James Doe. It gives me great pleasure to have James Doe here uh, from non-league day. James, uh, returning to the show, uh, he was here in episode 58. It is now episode 116. It was two years ago, James, that you were here last. Um, wow, it's flown by. Yeah. It has flown by, hasn't it? I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure you were gagging to come back on. Um, yep. I didn't have to drag you kicking and screaming to come back on and see us. First of all, James, how the devil are you? I'm all right. I mean, yeah, very busy. I believe you're very busy. I'm very busy. Um, yeah, the preparations for non-league day were two months out now, mm. and it's already getting hectic, which is good uh, because it means people are interested and want to get involved, um, and we want to, you know, put on a, a big event. But you know, 
I don't know where I'm going to find the time. I mean, I've got to do my other stuff, my, my normal life as well. But yeah, yeah. it's very busy. Yeah, so just to remind everyone that listening or watching this, uh, it's the 23rd of March, 2024, obviously. Uh, unfortunately, uh, James intentionally has picked it to be an away day fixture. So Hastings fans that are listening, it, we're playing Horsham. Uh, Horsham is a lovely ground, though. I'm sure maybe if we can uh, nipple tweak Horsham a bit, we can uh, get something good going on there. I will get in contact with the uh, Lardy boys, uh, as they are known. So, uh, But that's uh, for after this interview. Uh, James, any particular special highlight events coming up? Um, well, the big thing we're sort of focusing on this year is the 10th anniversary of our partnership with Prostate Cancer UK. So, yeah, we've been working with them for about 10 years. The one thing we're looking to target um, that's keeping me busy at the moment is to find, you know, sort of 10 clubs that want to sort of host big showpiece games around the country on the day um, with them so that they do a big sort of awareness raising sort of rally at each of those games. Um, if Horsham or anyone else are interested in doing that, in touch I'll with them. you mention it to them, James. Yeah, because, uh, yeah, it, it'd be really interesting if if people do want to get involved. I mean, at any level, we're not just talking about, you know, the top, top levels, down step six, seven, whatever. If people want to get involved. I mean, beyond the 10 clubs we're, we're looking to, to attract, if there's smaller events that can be put on as well. So, yeah, so that's that's the big focus for us. Also... Another thing that's keeping me very busy is some people who follow the non-league day account may have seen is our partnership with Athletic Bilbao in Spain. They are also the Basque country, which they're very keen to uh, point out. Um, they're hosting their own version of non-league day across the Basque country. Um, I know they're having a big meeting with all their uh, local non-league clubs tonight where it's going to be put to them. There's 170 of them. And uh, oh, wow. they did a dry run in September uh, last year and it went really well i went over for that and it was quite amazing oh, was uh, it a freebie the, james uh, did you get a um, freebie fly it was, or? It, it was it was yes oh superb <laughs> it's got to be some perks mate indeed um but yeah you know i went out there last january initially which we paid for and they treated us like kings took us took us around the training ground the club headquarters Great watched stuff. a derby with osasuna and all sorts of things and then yeah we did lots of meetings and i went out for that that sort of dry run in september and it was really good so yeah, that's keeping me busy as well. Oh, cool. Okay. Well, and in terms of yourself, is there any particular game or anything that you're going to be at, or anything that you're doing yourself on the twenty third? Um, well, that's to be decided. To be decided yeah. uh, there is quite a lot of drive. Probably one of the the prostate cancer games uh, would make sense. Mm. There is one we're targeting at the moment, which I won't declare yet because it's not you. signed off on. That could potentially also involve the Premier League game coming down as well. So we could have a big singing and dancing game um, where we've got all our sort of partners in one place. I mean, the Premier League have confirmed they will be taking the trophy out to at least one game for people to take their photos with it, stuff like that. But uh, that has yet to be signed off on. But yeah, so it's, it's looking good because they did that last year as well. And they went to games all over the weekend, actually, because there's, there was a Friday night match down in Sussex at Peacehaven, I think it was. And they went there on the Friday. Um, on the Saturday, they went up to the Midlands to Coventry Sphinx, and then they did a women's game on the Sunday. So it was really good. Let's, let's touch on this, uh, because we're both suffering QPR fans. Um, yeah. James, um, I mean, it was a bit of a tragedy that it didn't work out with Gareth Ainsworth. What's your kind of thoughts on uh, the Ainsworth experiment? I think it was definitely worth a go. I mean, given his track record was so good at Wickham. Yeah, it was a, it was a real shame. I mean, I didn't want to see him go. I wanted to get, you know, him to become a legend as a manager as well as a player mm. uh, but unfortunately I think it was right for him to leave when he did I have actually met Marty since he's taken over um, there was an event at the training ground at Heston which is also very impressive I went to I was lucky enough to have a look around there okay. back in November yeah I think the styles improved a lot although I heard although I didn't go on Sunday a friend of mine said it was an absolutely dreadful game against Huddersfield it was some of the worst football he'd ever seen. But um, as a QPR fan, saying they've seen the worst football they've ever seen, it's, <laughs> um, there's levels, isn't there? Oh yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I, I mean, we see who the, what the new signing is like. Mister, was it Frey or Fry? I'm not sure how it's pronounced. Um, hopefully, he'll add something. But uh, I'm positive. I think I think we can get out of it. Yeah, uh, I wasn't initially, but. From the outside looking in these days, because I, I don't get to many games at all now, because I, I, I go home and away with Hastings. I, I absolutely adore Hastings. I w don't know if I want to punish myself with watching QPR anymore, but um, I do still follow. I do still follow. My brother still goes, but um, yeah, it's um, it's going to be a tight one though. It's a tough league. 
the championship. Yeah, yep. at least it's something to you know to get excited about. We've got something to properly play for. We're not just drifting around in mid table. Yeah. So. <laughs> No, that's true. That's, that's, that's the way of looking at it. I like, I like the way you think, James. <laughs> Another thing, because uh, I do love a bit of merch, just to mention is uh, non-league day every year. Always do some lovely uh, merchandise, be it the pin badges, the T-shirts and things like that. Before I ask you about what they're like, what is the website they need to go to, James? Okay, so now, uh, now that's a good question. Now, So our website I'm not sure if the, the link is on there yet, but it probably is. I haven't checked. Yeah, so it's either nonleagueday.co.uk is our website, and there's probably a merch link there. But if not, it's Cult Zeros who produce them, and they've got it all on their website as well. So and Google Cult, Cult C-U-L-T, yep, Zeros. Zero. Yeah, and yep. they have a, a non-league day subpage on there, and it's definitely all on there. And there's some new stuff they're just, just putting up, I think. As we speak, or... I, well, it's it's there all year round, but whether they've ad, added the new stuff, I don't know. But it's worth it's worth Absolutely. looking anyway. The stuff that that's there all year round is worth having. Yeah, no, I will I will be getting my uh, badge uh, nearer nearer the time. Um, yeah, sure. But yeah, look, well, two things we got to think about. Hopefully that QPR stay up. But secondly, uh, that you uh, please, James, can you talk oh. to the fixture gods? Yeah, and tell that's them so to make haste to to get Hastings to play on there. The right date for you. Yeah, because we we uh, announced the date well before the fixtures were published, so it's not our fault. <laughs> well, Isthmian League aren't greatest. They did book us for about six, seven away games over Christmas in a row. So no, there is a conspiracy be. there. Um, but there you go. But listen, look, James, absolutely wonderful. Always lovely talking to you. Uh, thanks, Chris. And um, look, thanks for your time. Um, hope it goes really well. And as I say, I will... Um, once once we're done with this, I will um, uh, speak with fellow Ismian Prem teams fans to see if they can kind of have a little nipple tweak on uh, getting involved with, with such a worthy cause. Brilliant. That'd be great. Take care, James. Thanks, Chris. Yeah. The SBTS Ishmian Prem Fan Roundtable. Many, many thanks to Terry, Leon, Ian, Gabs, John, Paul, Lee, Rex and Aaron for making it happen. Yeah.
Well, it gives me great pleasure to introduce episode 116 of the Sussex by the Sea podcast. Ishmi and Prem, fan round table. Lots of lovely people here today. We've got Lee Parnell, Terry Scott, John Andrews, uh, Gabe back from Enfield, Ian Grant, Aaron Farrow from Hashtag, the mighty Leon, the Hastings man, uh, Paul Hamilton from Dulwich, and Rex Elworthy from Kingstonian. As we do with anyone that comes on this podcast first time, we ask them how they fell in love with their club, a little bit about themselves. So first we go to Aaron, a uh, big hashtag fan. Uh, Aaron, tell us how you fell in love with hashtag, please, sir. Uh, so it mainly started um, just through the YouTube thing. So I didn't, I didn't actually properly start a hashtag. I started at my local team, which is with Waker and Rovers, who are step five now. And... I started watching Hashtag and taking on board the stuff to then put into like a video for Wakering. Chairman had none of it. Um, and then my mate Ben, uh, Ben Brooks, who's now playing for Chelmsford, uh, he was going over at the time. And I said, I've been watching Hashtag a while. Might as well see how it is. Went over there. Everyone so welcoming. Spencer so welcoming. Um, and then obviously last season, we played Wakering down uh, near mine. Spencer walked past and went, Aaron, this is a derby for you, isn't it, mate? I was like, wow, but he remembers that. Wow. Um, but no, just since then, I've done every, every game last season, every game this season so far, um, home and away, every game. It's just, it's such a great club to be around. No one, we've got lots and lots of haters at clubs, but I just, it makes it even funnier at games sometimes. Well, thanks for that, Aaron. Um, and now we go on to Rex. Uh, Rex is a massive Estonian fan. Um, Lots going on at Kingstonian uh, that I know Rex wants to have a quick chat about as well. Rex, uh, how did you fall in love with Kingstonian? Oh, crikey. Um, I think I wanted to take my little boy to a game on his birthday when he was young and I couldn't get a ticket for Chelsea. Um, so somebody said to me, there's a, a non-league team instead. Why don't you try that? And um, just found the atmosphere very welcoming. Um, it was local. It was walking distance. You know, it was um, a lot cheaper on the pocket. Um, and you get to change ends at half time. What's not to like? I guess yeah. probably many of the reasons that lots of us fall in love with non league football, you know? Yeah. Thanks for that, Rex. Um, what we're going to do, because normally we try and go around, but I know um, Gab's uh, from Enfield is on a time limit. Gab, you ain't been on for a while, sir. How uh, dipping a little bit, dipping form. You were very charitable. You allowed us into the playoff spots. That's why I love you. Um, yeah. Gab, <laughs> Gab's talked to us about what's happening at Enfield. Oh, what isn't happening? Um, yeah, since since I last came on, I'm blaming the fact that I haven't been on for our dip in form. Because every time I come on, I usually talk about something nice. I usually say, you know, we're up there, we're, you know, we're competing with you lot. Um, it's, yeah, I mean, you know, you could say, okay, we played Horn Church, Billy Ricky in quick succession. Um, that wouldn't excuse going 3-1 up a hashtag and throwing it away. Uh, it wouldn't excuse some really quite strange performances against Folkestone and Cray. I'd like to think people haven't figured us out, but I think, you know, I think, you know, the boy, we've got a small squad anyway. The, you know, the boys are looking a bit tired and it's just, you know, a lot of what came off earlier in the season just isn't really. And we're, we're kind of, there's small mistakes are creeping in, but they're proving to cost us really. It's a strange one because we haven't played, we haven't disgraced ourselves by any means. Um, you know, we haven't played badly particularly it's just you know we've made one or two mistakes that have been ruthlessly punished um but you can't do that you know week in week out so uh fingers crossed i mean can be can be on saturday will be really interesting um you know because it, it as i say it's you know we're, we're on a pretty mean run of form but um you know can be a real test of like okay is it just the fact that we've dropped points against the big boys in the last two um or are there no signs of improvement at all. <laughs> um, so we shall see. Um, but, you know, but I think, I mean, Gavin Scavin's kind of hinted at potentially bringing people in. Yeah. Um, you know, as people probably know, we're not we're not the most flush club in the division. Um, so, you know, you can go window shopping all you want, but um, it's, you know, in terms of getting the right people in, it, it can prove quite difficult sometimes. Uh, I know one of our, uh, one of our old boys in, in Jerry, Gabe, he's gone to you lot. Um, so all the best to him. Uh, shame not to see him back actually, Enfield, but um, yeah, yeah so we, we shall see. It was, yeah, and that, um, I, I suppose it was a slight. I mean, I, I guess that, that Paul will probably have better insight than, than I will, but it, it did surprise me. Uh, the fact that he dropped from step two, Pungerford last season and couldn't really buy a game in, in 
Hack and Dulwich team. So, um, but yeah, good luck to him. Um, and, and, you know, hopefully, um, as friend, hopefully we start turning the corner soon because otherwise, you know, otherwise there won't be a corner to turn and uh, we'll find ourselves kind of marooned in, in the middle of the table. Yeah. I mean, you've got Canby at home, haven't you? Or, no, Away, no, you're at Canby. Ooh. At Canby. And we do not have the best record there. Uh, certainly not last year. Where we where we shipped we shipped eight goals in two games. Well, yeah. Well, let's let's go straight to John then. Um, John, John, what what, what are we saying about Canby? Obviously, a big game Saturday. We'll turn things around for you. Uh, very big game. Um, I probably wouldn't be quite as worried as uh, as Gabe is probably being though, because we've been a very charitable side lately. <laughs> I said, uh, I, mean, I was trying to look for an analogy because I was doing a couple of bits of a program um, this afternoon before I come on, and I was trying to think of the best kind of antidote to explain our form at the moment and it's a bit like a bag of rebels you just don't know what you're gonna put out next <laughs> yeah um oh, i mean obviously since last time we had um Folkestone, which that generally was quite a good performance i mean we had to battle with the wins as well as them to try and get something out of that but i think we always had that kind of actually so we seem to manage that better than other teams so that helped us through against them and it was you know good value for win what we got, considering they had lost since the start of the start of the year. But then, yeah, Chatham, we just got picked apart. I mean, it sort of showed we were missing men. I think we had our sort of sent main midfielder got injured in the warm up. Um, another boy who's been pulling up trees for us on Joel Reg from Avery at the minute, Kai Brown. I mean, obviously not not his fault, but oh yeah, he's, God bless him. His father passed away in the week, so obviously he's on passionate leave at the moment. So that left us with a firm option down the flanks. And then, yeah, what they were just got absolutely slaughtered. I think we seen about four in so 35 minutes. I've never been more sick to hear a song than uh, Just Can't Get Enough by the Peshmo. Because, God damn it, every time, every time they scored a uh, plan over the speakers, uh, I think it came on the radio uh, a couple of days later and felt like PTSD. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the radio yeah, I think What's that? Sorry, mate. I was saying, did the radio go against the wall after that? Yeah. Oh, god. Yeah. I feel feel like if I work in a glass uh, manufacturing company, I felt like I wanted to test the strength of the glass. See how the radio go through it. But no, um, it's funny. Like, we got the goal back, and I think we were just so yeah. We just knew we were getting nothing by that point, so we were just having a laugh in the stand. And then they got a fifth, which even their fans admit to us afterwards about six yards offside. So I was like, oh, lovely. That just uh, sums up our day. <laughs> And uh, yeah, yeah. Off. we had an absolute calamity in the uh, County Cup last night as well. So it's been a bit of a hellscape of a week, really. So we need a reaction. There's there's no two ways about it on Saturday. Um, and, you know, we know it's not going to be an easy game. Enfield are up there gunning for a playoff place. So, uh, but I mean, yeah, sort of what I was discussing with a few people last night. I mean, it's 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 not great at the moment. I mean, I don't know much I can give away, but it's a, it's a bit bleak. So. We need to pull something from somewhere. We need the people who are fit in the squad. I mean, we've got about seven first-team players out at the moment. So we need the people who are starting to step up. And we need to step up fast. Sorry to hear that, John. John, thank you for that. Uh, let's move on to Paul. Paul, tell us what's happening at Dulwich, sir. Six, games in, six goals in two games and only one conceded, which is quite nice. Um, yeah, it, it feels like Hakan's uh, plan at the beginning of the season... Um, it's finally kind of uh, finally working, yeah. So we what we played Haringey, um, and which was a funny game. It was we were two nil up in about ten minutes, and it looked like it could get really out of control. Um, uh, and the ref kind of decided that that wasn't going to happen. We were denied a penalty and an, and an, and an off, supposedly offside goal, but um, and then there was a big middle bit of the game where we just which just seemed to go um in the doldrums. It was kind of like it was about sixty minutes or so where they we just cancelled each other out, each other out. And then they got one back. We were all kind of standing around going, oh, God, here we go. <laughs> and um, we held on. They kept going. They're very fit, the team, this year. So they kept going and got one in the 90th minute. And then last night, 3-0 over Wingate was, um, it was just... Um... Yeah, thanks for that. We appreciate, <laughs> we appreciate that result. <laughs> yeah, that was, um, yeah, I mean, they, yeah, we just bossed them, really. It was a, a, you know, physically outmatched them um second goal was a thing of beauty ben and williams from the edge of the penalty area smashed it at like knee height it's just one of those gorgeous goals possibly a goal of the season um but yeah so find ourselves in what we're in 10th form's quite good um as a friend of mine said um it the playoffs is on 
because all season we've just been kind of like thinking, hey, really, we're going to get there, and it feels like we are. It feels like we are now. I mean, obviously, we'll probably go on a losing streak of five matches, but <laughs> it feel it feels like um, the it feels like we're good and confident and strong, and the players are playing like a really, really good team. Like, as I said when I was on there before, you know, this team is in t- almost entirely new. We've, we've only got two players left from last year, so it did take quite a while for them to to work out who each other were and how they how to play with each other properly. Um, but yeah, no, it's going very well. Thank you. Do you, do you want the playoffs to be on, Paul? Because last time you were on, you were very, you yes. were less yeah, than enthusiastic about that. life in the National League South. Well, I mean, it's not up to me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's not up to me. Do I want it to be? Look, it, it, it's that funny thing. You, you, look, I'd love us to get to the playoffs. Um, I, I, I think if we got to the playoffs and then um, didn't quite make it, that would be fine. Um, it's kind of, you know, look, of course, you know, I want the team to do well, but um, and if we did go back to the National League South, then we, that's so be it. But um, mixed well, sort, of, sort of glorious defeat would be. Yeah, yeah. It, ideally, we'd get through, get into the playoffs, beat Billericay and then go out to someone else. <laughs> that would be that would be completely satisfying all round, you know, defeat the art. defeat, defeat the old foe and then um, and then and then crash out to a team that's that they can then go and travel to a Western Supermare in Yeovil and Torquay. <laughs> well, I think, I think we'll be delighted to do that for you. Like glorious. <laughs> well, you've got Margate on uh, Saturday. On Saturday. Right? Are you, yep. Is it at your pace, uh, Terry? No. Yes, it is. It yeah. is, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Oh. so we've got Margate followed by Hornchurch. So that will be a quite an interesting, yeah. interesting site. I mean, we're looking forward to the Margate trip get, game cause, because it's Margate and yeah, um, right. um, day out, et cetera. But also... Um, Margate's form doesn't look fantastic. Um, so <laughs> that's a very, very nice way of putting it. <laughs> <laughs> Less than good. Um, and then Hornchurch, of course, that's a you know we'll we'll see see what we're really made of with them come to our place and see what happens there because if we can, um, I think it was two one when we played them last time, but that was a few months ago. So um, yeah, we'll just wait and see. I mean, it, 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 it's it's a nice it's a nice time to be a Dulwich fan. Last night was the first time. I think almost all season that we've kept a clean clean sheet. So it's um it's one of those satisfying matches that um you know every so often they just come along and you just feel really good about what you've just seen. It's about one in every ten matches where it's just everything clicks, it falls into place. You know, you score, the players look good, there's energy about the place, you know. Good, good. Right. Let's move on to Terry then, because we were talking about Margate. Terry. Yes. Margate. Well, I can't really say a lot, can I? I mean, I, I think we had some good spells last night, but we still shipped four goals. Just for people that don't know, Terry drove the Margate fans to Hastings and drove them back again and did all this singing for them as well, didn't you, Terry? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can only hear one voice on the other end, Terry. <laughs> But, um, yeah, yeah. You must no, have I mean, gone through a whole pack of strepsils today. I, I certainly would have. No, no, you know, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a little bit croaky, but that's just normal. Oh, fair enough. If that was me, I would have gone with at least two packs of strepsils. Nah, I never need anything. <laughs> I'm gonna be pretty quiet anyway, so well, yeah, uh, what well, unless it's um, uh, Daniel Hull on the phone, um, <laughs> joke, that one. but no, Terry, so. Uh, Obviously, you've got a few players in. Uh, an ex Hastings player, uh, someone called Dog Vos. Uh, you've also yeah, got... I'll reserve judgment on him. I think. Yeah, um, we can tell. He's a talent. Cadell's the one. He's a talent on Twitter. What? Go on. Cadell, Cadell Daniels, the one I I want to uh, put on because he he's played for us before, mm. and he's got he's he's talented, and if he can just pick up on the form he had when he was with us. We might have a little bit of a lifeline there if we can pair him up with um, Christ Kazim. It's not like you not to remember. Player. Yeah, our number four. His name escapes me for the moment. Uh, we call him Kaz. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just called Jer- you know, uh, Jerry, that you know, obviously used to play for Enfield and at Dulwich. Couldn't remember his yeah. last name while I'm doing commentating. So, but yeah. It was just Jerry. It was just, uh, you know, it was that. Yeah, basic. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, I know. I mean, it's good that you came along. Um, it was a tough You know me, I'm not going to miss a game. So. <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I mean, I think you can turn Dully. I can already tell by Paul's tone. They're taking you lightly. They're, the players, everyone, they're all going to be drunk coming into the game. They're already overly enjoyed themselves in Margate. Yeah. Turn them over. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll take but, that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, but, in all seriousness, I mean, we've we've got the players that we've got coming in. We've had Sam uh, Blackman, our captain. He's been out for a little. He's got a calf injury. Um, 
uh, Knighty, our defender, you know, Lewis Knight from Enfield. Mm. Yeah, so he's he's not he's not playing at the moment. Uh, Ben's been mm-hmm. out for three games. Ben Greenhog's been out for three games. We've brought in a couple of youngsters. Uh, Vinnie Bowman's one of our youth section, and he's he scored he scored more of our goals than any of the other players in the last couple of games. And he's like sixteen, seventeen. Um, yeah, I mean, if we can get everybody to sort of gel together. <laughs> You never know. We might get somewhere, but I'm not exactly hopeful. Well, I did. I did myself when I was sort of going. I thought, you know what? I think Margate are going to turn up. I'm not going to make any effort. They did. Yeah, you know I mean, yeah, and that's the that's ball. the thing. They are making the effort, and they and they are trying. And I can't fault them for that because you know you can, you can tell when they come off the pitch, they are absolutely gutted that we've lost. And it, I think you get into it, with with players, you get into a, um, a sort of mentality when you're not winning, don't you? It's like once once we can get a win or. A, under our belts, it will lift them. It will get them back into it. You know, get back into a winning spirit. Yeah, and, your and your, goal, what, your goalkeeper seemed yeah. your goalkeeper seemed very very upset with himself yesterday when that yeah. first goal went in. He, not upset yeah. with himself, but he looked very he looked very um, yeah very angry about it. Really yeah, good. yeah. I, I say they all take it really to heart if they haven't performed. You know, mm. and, and and that's the thing they've got a, a no no. I mean, no team goes out there going, oh yeah, I can't be asked today. All right, Terry. Well, we're, we're going to move on to Rex because I think Rex wants to talk about the Kingstonian protest that's happening on Saturday, or, or is it happening? Uh, well, yeah, thank you very much indeed. The protest is definitely happening. Um, so the background is that um, we're kind of at war with the directors. We started some big, uh, very public protesting last week. Um, T-shirts behind the goal, spilling out very clearly, sack the board. Well, they seem to have worked. Our chairman stepped away just uh, yesterday, the day before. Very, very, very bland, bald, two-line statement on our club website. Could you explain why there's an issue with the board? What, what's what's occurring at Kingstonia for people that don't know? Well, have you seen the league table? Other than the league table, yes. <laughs> you know, we've got 13 points from 25 games so far this season. We think we're on course to finish the season with our lowest ever points tally in a in a club that's been running since 1885 um the directors are quite clearly under investing in the club at the moment there would appear to be a strategy of let's manufacture at least one or two relegations to get into a lower cost league um and limp along like that you'll probably all be aware that we've been homeless for the last seven years, um, none of which is entirely the fault of the current board of directors. Um, mm. We went to, into administration and then there was a long, sorry tale of first AFC Wimbledon and Chelsea, um, not exactly helping our situation. Um, but since then, since 2017, we've been ground sharing. Um, we're currently ground sharing at Tooting and Mitcham, which I'm sure is a lovely place, but it's quite a long way away from Kingston on Thames. Um, our attendances are down to about 100, um, and it would appear that the directors seem to be happy with the situation. Now, all of this is taking place against the background of about 18 months ago, a group of supporters came together and offered to invest in the club, and they were offering up to 30 grand a year for five years and the directors just basically gave them the runaround played silly beggars refused to share any financial information and we are watching the demise of the club we all love so we've basically decided now enough is enough um so we started the protests last week yeah and part of the reason for coming on to your podcast this evening thank you very much for the invitation, is to say to Hastings fans that we will be essentially picketing Saturday's game and to ask you to support us in that. We will be remaining outside the ground for the first half of the game. Um, We all sort of hope um, that we can get into the ground at half-time. You know, there seems to be an unwritten rule in non-league football, doesn't there, that if you turn up after half-time, you're allowed in free of charge. But um, outside the ground is quite a decent slope, quite a hill. So we hope we'll be able to see the game from up there. There'll be live commentary anyway. So I'm sure we'll all have our mobile phones with us to follow what's going on. If it's raining, we'll follow it from in the bar. Um, and then we'll go and join the game in the second half. And I'm sure there'll be some noisy protests continuing then. 
uh, once we get into the ground after half time. Um, so if any Hastings fans would care to show some solidarity uh, with us, you'd be very, very welcome. Yeah, well, this will be going out first very, very early on Saturday morning. So they will hear it. So uh, That's super. That's, that's super. Awesome. We've spoken to the um, chief steward in charge of the ground, who is entirely sympathetic to what we're doing, has said that he will do his best to support us and not frustrate us. He's confirmed that none of the stewards on duty on Saturday are SIA badge holders, so they won't be able to um, force us to leave. They'll basically only have the power to ask us. Um, and if they do that and we refuse, you know, I guess it becomes a bit of a sit-in protest at that point, doesn't it? Well, good, good luck with that, um, Rex. Um, I wouldn't like to be in your position. I'd, I'd hate to have no ground. and I mean, I wouldn't be horrible. So I, I do hope there's some kind of resolution where some someone with a bit of money can come in and turn this, turn this around for you. Thank you very much. We hear rumours that a new ground share is just about to be announced. Um, still not back in the borough of Kingston. Slightly closer to home, um, but at a very much smaller ground with very poor facilities. And there's just no indication whatsoever that we're going to have a competitive budget again next year either. So I imagine we're looking at two relegations on the trot. Um, who knows? Possibly it'll be more. We are urgently now in the process of trying to set up a supporters trust in the hope that in a year or two's time, um, the remaining directors, however many there are by that stage, um, will will be prepared to talk to us about some form of fan ownership. I guess our model is to try and take 51% of the shares and see if we can get the supporters back together again who were prepared to invest last year but just got snubbed by the board. So, um, yeah, hopefully our future will be back in the borough of Kingston Obviously, it will be expensive to find somewhere to play, but that's our dream. Hopefully, we will um, move to a model of fan ownership some point in the future. Well, yeah, good luck with that, um, Rex. I haven't got, really got any smart answers here. Um, I mean, on the football front, um, do you see it as you're done? Uh, this season's done done and dusted? or Personally, thinking, yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, 13 points from 25. We're not going to escape relegation this year. And to an extent... I'd almost say, let's not bother. You know, if there is any money left in the club, maybe we need to save it for next year rather than wasting money trying to fight off the inevitable this year. I mean, what's the point? I think it's quite interesting how the fans are not turning against the manager. There's been no call whatsoever for sack the manager. All the call has been for sack the board. Um, so what I could do, Chris, is I could... Uh, share a link or two with you uh, when the cameras are off, maybe, and you can find a way of sharing those um, in the podcast when it goes yeah, out yeah. on Saturday morning. Yeah, yeah. Um, just, and you, and you know, you'll you know, you then be able to see very visually, spelt out in big capital letters, sack the board, um, the strength of feeling that the supporters have. And is, is the supporter base reasonably united behind all of that in terms of I've, I've got I've got some experience of trying to organise boycotts of games and things in the past and had you, you sometimes get quite a lot of pushback on that. Is, is inevitably right Ian, that? inevitably there's a few that have stayed loyal to the board. Um, again, inevitably it's a very vocal minority who frequent the club's forum or the Twitter channels or the Facebook groups where the strength of feeling is very, very strong against the supporters. I can't pretend it's unanimous, but um, the strength of feeling is very, very strong. Um, it really is as if enough people have had enough now. Yeah. Well, yeah, good luck. Yeah, good luck. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. I wouldn't, wouldn't be, 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 be in that position. Well, yeah, good luck Saturday. Well, we'll see you Saturday, Rex. We'll see you Saturday. Yeah, we'll Thank, see you Saturday. Well, Saturday thanks definitely. indeed, Chris. Yeah, you yeah. won't see me because I'm in Cardiff. But um, I still that's, support... That's the taking products. the boycott a bit far, uh, yeah, isn't it? come on. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to get as far away as you can. No, I support the club now by um, helping with the, uh, the supporters club. Um, there was a, a big takeover of the supporters club last year by people who felt that it needed to be much more critical of the board. So um, there was a little bit of a sort of a militant takeover going on there. And the supporters club actually changed its constitution to be more critical of the board to hold them to account um, and to seek accountability and transparency from them. 
Um, so that's how I support the club at the moment. I get to maybe half a dozen games a year. But, um, yeah, the way I try and help the club at the moment is just by trying to motivate the supporters and keep them together. Cheers, Rex. Yeah. And don't talk to me about supporters club. And we'll leave it there. Um, Aaron, Aaron, hashtag season, sir. Yes. Um, well, obviously, the game on, the game last night was <coughs> bad off the pitch, good on the pitch. Like, massive three points against... A massive three points against Chatham. Um, yeah, I won't go into too much about that. I've said it all off camera. Um Saturday was an annoying one. We've obviously we've been in a bad bit of form recently. Uh, coming up to the game yesterday, um, a lot of people are injured. We've had our defender are injured. A couple of our main starting midfielders out. Oh, one of our strikers are out. They had to get someone else in. Uh, so going to Hastings, we're always going to be a bit like, okay, lead a push in playoffs. Just take a draw out of it. And just the first half of the in fans have been a complete shambles. We. We were just not good at all, and we went, oh, I didn't even see the first goal because it was that quick. I went to get my drum, then heard um, heard the music come on. I was like, oh great, here we go. Major <laughs> um, vu for me last night. <laughs> God, I, I it. I'm definitely going to get PTSD now from uh, <laughs> Depeche Mode anytime I hear him. At least, uh, at least you got through in reply. Uh, though, Aaron, that's the best thing, eh? <laughs> yeah. Um, and yeah, then for some reason at the Hastings game, some fans set off a flare at half time. I don't know what that was about. Um, mm. And then um, the second half, I thought we were much better, really. Um, I don't know from your angle, but where we were behind the goal, it looked like a harsh second yellow for Sam, our, mid- our midfielder, which to be fair, it's a shame, really, because Sam Cornish has been really, really good recently while our two main midfielders are out injured. Um, he's one, been one of the ones that have been the best out of a bad bunch. Um, but no, yeah, apart from that, it's sort of our form had been dipping quite a lot. It's all started at the Potter's Bar game. The Potter's Bar game, again, was completely unacceptable. All the players come over going like, we're really, really sorry. Like You could see in their eyes they were they weren't expecting it at all. But we've got big things coming up. Um, we've got Horsham on Saturday, which we won the last minute winner um, away. Um which was a very, very good game. So we're coming in quite confident, obviously, after a brilliant win last night. Uh, just hoping, really, that we can start back on a, a decent bit of form again. Um, to, I'm in field of the both, I'm in field of the both back this Saturday as well, We've been up, up, they told me. So well, hopefully when we get the, the full team back together again, back from injury, we'll start get back on that form again. But, I mean, our goal for this season was never really to be pushing. Well, where we are at the moment, anyone would take. Like, we're... Our goal for this season was never really to get playoffs. It was just stay in the league, build ourselves a name because we don't want to go up too fast. But next, it's going to be a season where we go up to say the Vanarama South and then just get battered and go down again. We'd rather just stay in the league, even if it's for like four or five seasons, just staying in one league where we know that we can compete. And lots of people on Twitter and stuff, easy criticising, going, oh, losing games isn't good enough. When we're basically like six points from guaranteed safety, whatever happens. So these games, like last night, I come into the game thinking, right, I'll take a draw out of this because we do. at the moment we're playing tough teams. That's the main thing. We're Towards the end of the season, we've got easier teams, I would say. Um, obviously, we know we can get the, the points against seeing the other tie that we played against them. Uh, but it's all just, it's our goal for this season as supporters was to go mid-table. And at the moment, we're sitting just outside the playoffs. So even though we're losing games, we're not really moaning. Aaron, was... Aaron, sorry. What, what, what's the kind of experience of being a supporter of hashtag like? Because obviously, it's a different model. Yeah. Uh, one, one of the things that drives me mad is sort of actually being at a game, and then finding people who weren't at the game have an, have an opinion that's apparently more important than mine. Yeah, because I sort of think you know, if you're in the ground you've seen much more than anybody who's not in the ground. Um, yeah. What's it like? How does it work? <laughs> it, it's hard to not let frustrations kick in, really. I mean, the amount of stuff we see, especially after the, uh, after the events last night, the amount of people in the comments saying, oh, this happened, this happened, this happened. And then once we were losing games, after every single tweet, it was, devs out, devs out, devs out. We're just like, were you there? Like... Even the games against Lewis, like Lewis, we lost three two, for instance. Bognar, we lost, we lost by like was that six three or something like that. But we we played well. It's people look straight at the, the full time 
result on Twitter and think, right, enough is enough. Get him out. We're losing games. When watching the game and being at the game, we, we played all right. Like I said, with Lewis, we lost three two. But I generally, you could see an improvement in the games each game, even though we were still losing. And obviously, now we got that reward with the win last night. Um, but yeah, it's really that, really hard. Does that not drive you mad? Because obviously, as as you grow as you grow as a club, that sort of ratio of supporters in the ground to supporters who are, who are on yeah. the internet is never going to change, is it? No, I know. It's 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 one of the annoying things, really. It's I mean, we're, we're always pushing to try to get more people down who watch us on YouTube, who are, say, for instance, live about like half hour to an hour away, just so we can build the crowd beyond the goal. There's about, I'd say there's about 20 of us, maybe 30 of us that go home and away each game, all standing on the goal, um, which is brilliant. But then you look at teams like... Hornchurch, um, it was, like you see, you see big teams with a big like could even be like a hundred plus of following, and you were thinking more like, is there how is there a way that we can get fans down to the games to join us to be like a massive beyond the goal like fan base? Because I've been told so many times the drum overpowers the singing, and if I mean it's 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 a shame really that, that that's the case. Um, but all the stuff online, it's really annoying like you see like especially our goalkeeper like our goalkeeper since Ted's went back to Chelsea it's the amount of hate towards our goalkeepers unreal and it's so is that needed. from people is that from people who that, that are not at the ground they're yeah. not at the game yeah, yeah people... they don't they don't see it so they're just mm. oh yeah we're shit yeah yeah you're right that that gets worse as you, as you grow up the football pyramid I watch England a lot and the amount of people that speak to me about the England game and they're absolute experts and they haven't even watched it on the TV let alone yeah. be there be there live um they they're the experts because they've seen the score you know no, I mean, score on Twitter I think it's probably the case of obviously where we've where we've had Ted from Chelsea we, we've been blessed we've got some 17 year old young agile goalkeeper been the pro set up and we've gone down to a National League goalkeeper and people are thinking, oh, he's terrible. Whereas in comparison to Ted, they're probably not the same level seeing the experience they've had. But yeah. it's still uh, different qualities that our keeper has. That's not Ted out of the, um, the movie. <laughs> no. <laughs> I just... Uh, yeah. I'm a bit of an animal. <laughs> he was the he was so he, he was the young lad who played for England though, wasn't he? He was the under yeah. seventeens or something like that. He was, was he was yeah. the backup in the under seventeens, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, such, yeah, such a good World Cup, he? he was yeah. in the under seventeens World Cup. Yeah, uh, yeah, I think it was. Yeah, but no, I mean, like it's it's the good it's the great thing about non-league is just staying in contact with the players. Like I'm I'm now yeah. pretty good mates with Ted. Like he's a year younger than me. It's and it's it's just good that the connection you get with other players and stuff. Like all the players. After last night, we all done. Is everyone okay? And it was all sort of like everyone sort of came together. I mean, the final final whistle went last night. Players on the bench for the porters, all everyone just together, just still celebrating. It was it's just brilliant, and it's what the people online don't see. Like people online can see, oh, three, four games, seven games and a loss, for instance, and think, oh, we are terrible. When if you don't go to the game, we have good parts, we have bad parts. It's... Do, you, do you think that these um, think... Sort of victims of your own success, really, because you can watch, you can be a supporter of Hashtag from afar because you've got such great, you know, um, online presence. Whereas, obviously, if we didn't if we didn't go to the Hastings, it's a little bit harder to be able to keep up with what's yeah. going on. And... I mean, obviously, we, we've, been, we've been blessed with how quickly like it's blown up on the social media front that's yeah. like and it's sort of like people are always going to us going oh only there because they're famous and we're just like not at all really like there's only there's, a, there's like three or four people who've been there since the very very beginning and that's when obviously they were just growing up with only like 10k subscribers for instance and then obviously as we've got more people in like i said i moved with brooksy from waker in just to give it a go to see how it was over there because i love my non-league football um and it's sort of the whole thing of it just uh, abuse becomes way more apparent now towards us like we, we've got you know everyone knows the Millwood chant and no one likes us chant we do that for hashtag now at games because we're just like well no one actually does like us sometimes um but it's sort of we just every game we go to we're like oh we're expecting abuse I mean if, if someone start even t- someone starts something new like we get a brand new insult we're like yeah fair, fair play it's original you know what I mean like we, we've had everything at this point um, but it's 
we just are not and if it's another just normal non-league club really like i you, get you wouldn't be in this league if you hadn't earned that position that's what i mean yeah it's people got like yeah we've used money and stuff not really we're privileged with the players we've bought in but that's because of the chairman the manager it's not due to all the sort of thing like oh we'll give you like a grand to come play with us. You know what I mean? It's sort of just like the players have signed because of the managers and the chairman. And we've gone up the leagues well with signing good players. Like all the players that have left us have gone on to play other teams. Like we've a couple of players play for Whitham now, for instance. We've other, te- other players, like they've all grown up through non-league and they're still playing non-league. Um, but it's sort of, it's, we're just, we're, we're like a normal team really. Like we, we, we expect to get hate and stuff. And we just find it funny. It's got to the who, point now. It's kind of funny. You, uh, uh, Aaron, sorry, mate. Uh, oh, away supporters. Uh, well, I'm an away supporter, so I. I yeah, it's yeah. mainly. It's um, mainly. Uh, it's mainly. I'll be honest with you. I didn't even know you lot existed until about two, three years ago. Mm. And I yeah, think, that's the thing. Leon, yeah. Leon was because Leon, you know a bit more about. Like, I'm not interested in all the social media stuff, but like you were saying, Leon, when it about they like a YouTube because I didn't know. So that doesn't mean I hate you. Yeah. Like... No, I mean, it's it's sort of, it's the minority, you know what I mean? It's sort of, and again, like last night's another a complete example. The majority of the Chatham fans were amazing last night. And there was a little small minority that were just, oh, let's pick on these guys because they're probably as weak as other people. And it all just, obviously, everyone knows what happened. But it's like, it's a, uh, it's, it's just, there's the chance we get towards us. Um, we just, it, we just find it funny, really. But it's. Where we though, Aaron, Aaron, hang on. What chance were towards you? What are we talking oh, about? Oh, we've got like stick, specifically... our, stick our cameras up our ass, stuff like that. Oh, that's quite funny. Come on. Uh, yeah, we, find, like, we find that we find all the chance hilarious. Like, yeah. if, if, I said, if hey, makes... at least the camera is smaller than a drum, love. I mean, it, it's, it's just we just find it. I said, we just find it funny. He's got this. You've everyone gets abused like different clubs and different clubs and stuff. It's we just we just just find it hilarious. Like we go to the football to enjoy it. If someone yeah. creates a chant about us, we just find it really funny. It's 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 a very good club to be around, and people like especially like people online don't see the whole behind the scenes of the players to supporters sort of connection. Um, especially like say, like catch twenty two about how the sort of model of the club is. They say we use no day to day in the in and out, and you see the hard work that's put in behind the scenes and on the pitch. Whereas yeah. other people can just look at it through a very filtered lens and just sort of pick out any flaws they yeah. might like with it. Yeah, but you've got that. You have got that uh, the added problem that you're you know you've, you're renowned for this your online presence, and yet that means that there's. You've got way more many haters out there just by the way social media works, right? So you are going to attract an awful, you know, the, the, it's a double-edged sword, isn't it? You, you, yeah. you, 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 and also like geographically where you are, you're in you're in a part of Essex where there are a lot of football clubs. So you're gonna, mm. it is quite hard to get hold of fans, actual physical fans to yeah. come and stand in the place. It's a, it, 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 we when we went there, we had it's the beginning of the season. We really enjoyed it. It was great. I mean, yeah. It, yeah. I remember it, that game, it yeah. wasn't the most. It wasn't the most. It wasn't the most well attended match on earth, but it was good fun, and you lot were really welcoming. So you know, but but yeah, you wherever whatever league you're in, because of how many followers followers you've got online, you're just you're going to get more grief than almost everyone else, aren't you? Just by the nature yeah. of it, it's just more like just not really looking at it. I mean, like with um, our main hashtag people who do all the social media and stuff, ten they're just like guys. You you know you're you know you're at the games. They're not at the game. Plain simple, ignore them. We'll, we'll hide their comments and stuff. Um, I mean, especially in, in that bad run of games we've had recently, it's sort of been like the hate has been bush. Uh, but I it's sort it's of being it's... bothered. Yeah, about that it, though, that obviously. happens. With yeah, the thing. Yeah, well, well, it does yeah. Not be bothered about it. Like it's just yeah. people yeah. chat all sorts of shit. It's words that words don't hurt you. Do you know what I mean? They yeah, yeah. Just, hurt you. So just yeah. take it. It's all all. Uh, you know, just let them get on with it. Absolutely, yeah, they're they, they, doing all right. They, yeah, we, they, they. Uh, you need to get around, sing though. songs, sing songs yeah. about Hastings. Um, people sing yeah, songs about on. Hastings fans. Yeah, yeah, I know. We've heard so many things about Hastings fans. Hey, well, let's talk about yeah. Hastings for a change, right, chaps? Yes, it's it is just chaps that are here. Sorry, I was thinking it was only female fans. I'm looking at Leon's posture slightly. Um, I think we, I think we're doing all right, haven't we? I think we're in the fourth place. Yeah. Um, yeah. Two, as as I yeah. remember, last time since we've done this, two wins, Tag and yeah, Margate. Um, Margate, yeah. 
I think all of you have been to both of those games. Who wants to start? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll start. chip in if you want. Yeah, I'll chip in. You happy with start, that? Lee. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, as same as Paul said, really, uh, six six goals from, from the last two games, but haven't conceded any. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> doing really well. It's been, been you know, it's uh, yeah, two wins and a draw from the last three. So, going really well. And uh, David seems to be banging them in after you gave him some abuse, Chris, about not, you know, claiming he was going to get 30 goals and looks like he's going to be proven right, I think. 25 goals, isn't he, in all, all competitions? Yeah, I mean, just, just for anyone that doesn't know, I had him on the podcast ages ago and he said he was going to get 30 goals. And when he said it, I nearly laughed. I had to hold myself in. You know, I've said this for a while. I didn't think he was going to get it. And, well, 25 coming up and he he's breaking that. He's breaking yeah. that all the end of the season. Well, he's got... done him. Leading scorer in the league. Yeah, nearly got a hat trick last night, didn't he? But not quite. Um, yeah, two goals. Got got back to brace. So yes, yeah, going really well. See, the team seems to be sort of knitting together really well. And you know, John Ufa down the down the wing seems to be absolutely flying. Um, I'm absolutely made up to be fourth fourth spot at the minute, considering you know what um, the changes yeah. we've had. Um, you know, change of management. We've brought in brought in new oh. players. So yeah, to be to be fourth at the minute, I'm absolutely made up with it. Um, you know, we were sat outside the playoff spot, so I was, I was satisfied with that. Because you know, all all considered, what's happened, but um, yeah, no, the team's looking good. I think you know, it was helped a little bit by the last two opponents. weren't really all that, to be honest with you. I mean, I'm not going to sugarcoat it like Paul, but <laughs> thought my game was shit. So. But no, I, um, <laughs> but I, I, think, I do, I do think um, it was helped a bit by I think the opposition. Like you look at the highlights, um, especially the second goal against hashtag. I thought. You know, the defending was particularly poor, but you can only play what's in front of you, can't you? And um, but they're yeah, still good, run. good performances, good like run, John, though, Nigel. Yeah, yeah, exactly that. Yeah, I no, yeah. still, um, you know, I keep pinging those balls out to John. Yeah, he's 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 on, you know, really good form. David's there at the right right place. So I'd say more tap it in than bang it in. But he's he's position he's positional play is, is absolutely fantastic, isn't it? So it's um, yeah, no, I'm absolutely made up. But um, obviously, we, you know, we've got um. Kingstonian this weekend, but we've got a few tougher challenges coming up in Lewis and Horsham, who I think our record against them the last few years isn't great. So um yeah, much, much tougher test ahead for for the lads, but we're looking we're looking good. You know, we have you know, but we're looking a lot lot tougher to beat then than we was sort of September, yeah. October time, sort of time yeah, part of the season. Definitely. So well, it's yeah, good Paul to see Martin players that have got a bit of bit of fight in them, really. That's what's all what Hastings fans want to see is players are putting it, you know, we've been blessed with the likes of Sammy yeah. Adams, Jack Dixon, those sorts of players that will run run through brick walls for for, for not only the you know the teammates but for the club. So it's yeah, I'm I'm happy. Yeah, it seems world apart from what it was at the beginning of the season, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, I mean obviously, you know, we, we had our old mate Don Vose, saw him last night and he, he's obviously he's obviously got a bit of talent, isn't he? But I think he's the wrong player for for Margate yeah, right now. They're in a relegation absolutely. fight. He's I think he's yeah. completely the wrong player. But yeah. oh, you're right. I think you're in a relegation fight. You need someone who's going to be putting the effort in. Don't mm. you? And he certainly yeah. certainly doesn't like doesn't like to do that. So. No, no. I mean, fair enough. He may have a style of play mm-hmm. where you know, sort of a Berbatov style of football. But um, but yeah, you need someone that's going to absolutely run their run their socks off. For, yeah, he's playing, playing for Hastings and Hastings and Margate. He's not playing. Yeah, for, you know, yeah. <laughs> he's exactly. he, he can't have that arrogance, can he? So much, no, he's right? exactly that. Yeah. He, he has exactly. got it on social Gives media. Gives you an idea though. of how desperate we are, eh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, may, maybe so. I mean, like I say, he's he's obviously got some some sort of talent, but yeah. Yeah. I think the yeah. other thing about what's going well at the moment is the attendance, isn't it? The attendance yeah. at the pilot field has been really good. Yeah, I think. I, I mean, because I've I've been I've been going for a few years, but I think. The the two thousand five hundred against hashtag is the biggest attempt I've seen in the pilot field just for a, like a bog effectively no no to hashtag a bog standard league game yeah. you know I've seen big attendances in for things where we might win something or a cup game or you know, that sort of thing. but for basically what's just another league game that mm. was a big old crowd yeah um, it's, it's great it's a real buzz about the place and it, and brilliant to get, actually get a performance with that. Crowd, same as the Dulwich game. Really. Yeah, no, normally we get like a big yeah. crowd in, and yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 poor performance. Yeah, yeah nice. It's no, it's, good it's really good, and I think you know, going forward, we look a bit scary, to be honest. Um, yeah. In the, mm. uh, really you know, I think as as well. as hashtag found out the sort of natural inclination of uh, of opposition is to kind of press us, and then we look a bit nervy at the back, and you know, you can kind of get a bit excited that it, you know you're getting back into the game as they were. 
And yeah, then you know, um, that bloody great thing you've got at 13 is huge. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, we can hit you on the break. Blink of an eye. That's the thing, which wasn't always the case in the past. Um, so, yeah, sort of we look a bit a bit scary. Did any of the other fans here, see, any of the other Hastings fans see the, is it, uh, Jerry's cartwheel? Yeah. yeah. When, when we scored. It wasn't that graceful. <laughs> yeah, he tried a couple it of was, them, didn't he? And then he got knackered. I've got it. I've got it. I've got it on the video. It looks mm-hmm. really good. Yeah, so that's Didn't he get injured impressive from that. our end. <laughs> Should get yeah. injured after that. <laughs> it was quite impressive. I mean, it's amazing to get to score two goals in the first minute of of two home games in a row. Is yeah, it's ridiculous, isn't it? It's sort of like we've just managed to capitalise on, particularly on John Ufa, on his pace and how you know how skillful he is before the opposition has worked out that they need to pay attention to that. Mm. So it's sort of like you know, thirty seconds in, you're just sort of getting a feel for the game. Oh, they've scored already. Mm. Um, yeah, and the fullback realizes that they're in for a bit of a long evening or long afternoon. That's what we said last night. We were like, "Wow, they've scored again in the first minute. It's crazy." Yeah, that can be a bit of je- jeopardy though, can't it? Because I know the number of times you score early and then spend eighty nine minutes just yeah. going up. And yeah. Exactly. That. Yeah. What am I watching? You know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, to be honest, we sh- we should have been about five up by half time last night. Really, yeah. shouldn't we? We created so many chances. On on Saturday, it looked like it might have been heading that way because we got our goal and then hashtag they, they looked really threatening. And then I think that second goal just absolutely killed it for yeah, them. Yeah, killed so it, didn't it? It was against the run of play. The, set, the sending off, of course, helped. And then we were happy to, to sort of sit back and just play a keep ball for a bit, weren't we? And I know a few fans were getting a bit um, sort of critique saying we maybe, you know, should try to push for a third or fourth. But you've got to remember, we've got a month up of sort of midweek, mid, midweek games, Saturday, Tuesday games. So... No, maybe it's a bit of there's always going to be somebody grumbling. management there. Well, you know, yeah, yeah you, we've both been supporting this club long enough for me to, <laughs> to know that. I know, but, um, yeah, I know you said, Aaron, that you thought that you came back into it quite well second half, but I think from my point of view, I think Hastings controlled, controlled it better in the second half and just sort of kept it and didn't really need to do anything. Yeah, it was a, we, we thought it was definitely was a better first, a better second half than the first until obviously. The sending off. I mean, as I said, it was we couldn't really see on the goal while it was a second yellow. Um, but it was clumsy though. Yeah, it's when you're already on a booking. It's it's you've got to be careful. And it, it happened in very quick succession as well. I think about three or four minutes before mm. within each booking. So the referee already had him in the back of his mind after just booking him, and he goes in for a silly challenge and gets himself sent off. It's yeah, he gave the ref an opportunity, didn't he? Yeah, gave the ref a chance, really. Yeah, well, it gave, I say, it gave me something to get excited about. I was doing a match day commentary for the first time against the tag, and obviously I did the Margate games. As Lee was saying, I felt that it was very comfortable for Hastings. There wasn't too much to talk about. A, a, a slightly suspect red card was something to yarn yeah. away about for a couple of minutes. It's, it's annoying as well as the fact that we it, it, it's not a straight red. We can't obviously then appeal it. So it sort of it it sort of it hurts it even a bit more. Uh, but obviously it was all right last night to play. I thought we played all right last night. To be fair, uh, Mindy has gone for Horsham though, which hopefully we are midfield to come back in again should be okay. Um, then also last night as well we got our, our left back second yellowed. Um, so that's another position we've now got trap on top to play. Um, so how's how's the commentary been going then, Chris? Tell us oh, about well, the me, commentary. Me commentary, right? The commentary. Me, myself, and um, Tom Dyson. Oh. I nearly got his name wrong there. I played sitting Tom. next to him. Tom. <laughs> Tom Dyson, Laurie, yeah, it's good fun. Um, I'd say Tom Hoover, weren't you? Uh, well, I was going to say James <laughs> Dyson, and that's isn't that the bloke who does the Dyson? Yeah. Um, yeah, that's no. a trigger joke, isn't it? Sorry, no, go on, sorry. No, no, it's, <laughs> the, um, no it's, it's good fun. It's good fun. Um, I think he's trying to reach out to Stonian uh, Rex. He, I think he's trying to contact some people with you, your, yourself, um, about maybe doing a way day, match day commentary. I'm going to be with the uh, ladies and gentlemen that are going to the game possibly slightly earlier um, in the day so um, I won't be uh, fully in, <laughs> what do you mean Chris? Uh, <laughs> complete uh, intrinsic <laughs> well I might be yeah. we've got live commentary from the game on Saturday which is good so hopefully that's something that we can um, share with someone from your end as well Chris yeah, yeah, I think hopefully, I think Tom's reach. He said he's going to reach out, so that's not yeah, my, absolutely. My thing, so that'd be great if we can. Uh, Given the fact that we won't be watching the first half of the game, it will be nice to listen to the online commentary, won't it? 
exactly exactly <laughs> um yeah so yeah that, that, that it's going really well so it's um and it's good fun so i mean and and a first a first minute goal both times i've done it yeah brilliant Always are you doing goals. are you doing next tuesday so you would see what what are you so, doing uh, next there, there was a, i was putting a little joke yeah there. what um no. the, the, uh next tuesday's is that horsham at home Awesome, yeah. Yeah. Awesome, yeah. Um, I may if he if he hasn't got someone, I'll do it. Oh, I see. So, so, so you doing to... kind of co-coms? I'm that... doing co-coms. Are you that... doing Excuse expert me, summarizing? Yeah. They're your words. <laughs> I'll hold on to those words. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, you could call it something. Um, yeah. So uh, that's what I might be doing. But um, actually, I got got... touching upon um, well. Ian's comments about the um capacity um the tendencies. Like it weren't it weren't it didn't seem like that long ago. We were struggling to get. Three, four hundred through the gate, and now to see mm. a fa- you know a thousand plus now two thousand plus for for sa- you know Saturday games is absolutely amazing. Like when I first started going, it was you, you we was happy to have five hundred through the gate when we was Hastings Town in the Southern League, and at some point we was getting gates of like two fifty maybe, and yeah, it's, it's, it's testament to like obviously the who's in charge at the club. I know they're offering tickets to um, parents of like local school kids and that, which obviously helps, and then. Off, well, yeah. James said he nicked that off Dulwich. Apparently, that's what Dulwich do. We want to want to be like Dulwich. I did notice a few few beards, beardy type people, and <laughs> and fancy yeah. fancy yeah. scarves in, in the crowd. Yeah. I think, think, think Windy noticed scarves. that as well Saturday. You know, but as long right. as they're spending money and getting behind the team, you know, yeah. what's hap- what happens? The banger at the bar. <laughs> yeah. What happens once you, to, once you get to that point of yeah, you, know, you, you, you you're happy with the attendance, and then the beards and people with no socks. Turn up, <laughs> and everyone starts moaning about it. There was a bit of a beef online about someone. There was a message to do. Did you see? There was a tweet someone put out from our club, which was then taken down very quickly. Oh t- yeah, but that doesn't. Yeah, yeah. Does Some kind of snarky thing about yeah. Well, you you know you 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 were celebrating the fact that you got two and a half thousand, which should be celebrated. <laughs> someone, oh, yeah, that's to, yeah. And some yeah. someone online. Uh, your, your, your club, your club. Your someone at the, your someone club, at the club. Mate. Not a director. It was someone who's new to the club. Um, I think got um had a bit of a rush blood to their head and decided to be rude. And of course, clubs at this level should be respectful of each other. Yes. And you know, it's we're we we're, we're we're really privileged to have the fans, the the attendances that we have. But I don't know anyone at the club who who sneers actually sneers at other clubs. You know, it's what you've got, what you've got, and if you can build on that, then great. But yeah, that was um uh there were a few words had. Uh, <laughs> with the person who wrote that tweet, and um, I don't think it's going to be happening again. Did I say you you had two sellout crowd? You had another sellout crowd the other week. Sorry, did I say you had you had another another sellout crowd again last week? Yeah, yeah. On Saturday was three, 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 three thousand three hundred and whatever. Yeah, I think, it was, I think it was three, 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 four, which was the same as our game. Our game and against theirs. you. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's, it's, well, yeah. It's, I mean, it's it, it, it's um. Yeah, it, yeah. The attendance has the attendances have. It, last year was quite good. We had a few sellouts, but now it just seems like it's every Saturday, and it's um, you know, it's it, it it's a lovely problem to have. I mean, it's great, it's great, but it is a, it it is it, it does cause all kind of headaches because an awful lot of the people who come along are um, we try to politely refer to them as day trippers. There's an awful lot of people who come once or twice a season and they have a good laugh, but they tend to come in quite big groups. So there's you know um. So although the although there's an atmosphere, there's a lot of singing, there's a lot of fans who go every week and there's a lot of fans who really know the club inside out. Um, some games, there's just as many people who are there just for the first or second time, which can make the atmosphere a little bit strange. But, um, you know, as I say, yeah, it's, so it's like, sort of like that time when you have a you have a massive cup tie, isn't it? And you think, oh, the atmosphere is going to be amazing. And actually, because because it's diluted. Yes. So it's sometimes not. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah um, well, what, I would, what I would say, yeah. Kingstone, you're at home to Dulwich um, mm-hmm. in about six weeks' time or five, six weeks' time or whatever. Yeah. So um, there should be room for you all. Make sure you all bring your tennis balls. That'll be quite something for the directors to witness, won't it? Tennis balls? Have you not been following the tennis ball protests? No, sorry. Uh, think sort of, uh, yeah, think Reading. Okay. Oh, okay. Google, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Google is your friend. You'll find out what we're talking about. Yeah, I, I was it's thinking funny, Priscilla, like... Queen of the Desert, for a second, but that was ping pong balls. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's that's a bit like going back over. <laughs> it's it's a strange territory for us going back to Tooting and Mitcham because, of course, when we were shut out of our ground for best part of a year, we went to Tooting and Mitcham, and we've even got songs about hating Tooting and Mitcham. So that was a very weird experience. But um, 
yeah they let they let us stay there for what uh yeah just uh, just over a year and i mean it saved us we needed to keep playing i mean it's um but interesting to hear that you've got this uh this issue with your directors and that you're getting to protest um we'll have to have a word because we do have a supporters trust already and we'll have to have a word amongst ourselves to see what we might come and do help you with on the game that we're coming to yeah indeed i think the regional network manager uh for our area is actually from dulwich so uh we've already reached out to him and um set up a meeting to begin those conversations so i mean obviously we need our directors to tell us that they're prepared to talk to a trust. We need our directors to tell us that they're prepared to embrace the idea of fan ownership. Otherwise, there won't be much point in setting up a supporters trust, or there'll be less point less point in setting up a supporters trust. But um, nonetheless, we look forward to hosting Dulwich. I'm sure it will be uh, happy memories for you. Um, we, I mean, it's a fine club. It's the, the stadium is fine. It's just that it's way too far from Kingston on Thames. Yeah, and yeah. our supporters just hate going there. Absolutely hate going there. So the attendance is now have fallen so low uh, that we just don't generate an atmosphere at all. And yeah. then that kind of snowballs, doesn't it? Yeah, it's a funny ground for that as well with those two big concrete banks, isn't it? The, the, and then and then and then the the huge the huge one on one side where you have to get round it. You have to go up through the building down the other side, and it's all yeah. But that was that was the site of our um of our promotion win. So funny. So the ground of our one of our, our our most sort of of one of our nemesis is actually where we had one of our most happy days. It's very strange. And the stadium there meant that it was a sellout, and the view you you could see the game. If we'd hosted that game at Dulwich in Champion Hill, you'd have had two thousand people not being able to see anything. So it was actually playing at Tooting that did have a, a few upsides, but mainly, I mean. We were very pleased to get out of there eventually because we've got our own home. Okay. Good luck uh, to you. Well done. You Something we can only dream of. What, on Saturday, us lot? Yeah. I would think 300-ish. So, more than the home ground then, yeah. <laughs> yeah, two, 300. I mean, I, from from the people I know, um, almost everyone I know said they're going, and that's just 20 off the top of my head. So, um, yeah, you'll get a lot, yeah. I think that one is the calendar for every club, isn't it? Everyone just thinks they can do the the only force being the big Dino de Margo. I mean, we've got that next month as well, and we're all sitting there trying to highlight oh, yeah, how we get down. It's, it's, it's always that, like, the first ones out of the calendar. Just for, like you say, I think the uh, the sanctimonial uh, aspect of it, which is being the Margate, though. Yeah. Whatever make sure you do, really make... dolphins, yeah? <laughs> Whatever you do, make sure the oh, coach is at its MOT as well. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, we'll check that tape player in the... Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, you, you'll be very welcome anyway. Good. Looking forward to it. So that sounds excellent. Just quickly, one need to mention, because I was on uh, the quick interview with James Doe from Non-League Day. Um, Non-League Day 2024, 23rd of March. Um, they're doing... I want to mention it because it's different clubs on here. Um, 10... 10 games that prostate cancer awareness are getting involved with and adding support to and want to do kind of big games. So if, they, if any of your clubs are interested in getting involved, please give James Doe at Non-League Day. Um, uh, he's on Twitter. Um, I'm sure you, have, you guys have heard of Non-League Day before, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Course, yeah. yeah. so please give him a shout because um, they're beginning to kind of try and pick up uh, what games they want to get involved with. It's across the steps, so it won't just be Isby and Premier be up. But yeah, please give him a shout. Well, listen, look, thanks, guys. Um, Lee, Terry, John, Leon, Aaron, Ian, Rex and Paul, thank you ever so much. And uh, we'll see you at the game. Take care, guys. Good luck on the uh, games on Saturday, OK? Cheers. Cheers, mate. Yeah, Thank you, guys. That's it for another episode, SBTS fans. If you want to get in contact with this podcast, the email is hufcpod at gmail.com. The Twitter, which is sbtspod. Otherwise, go to the YouTube. Over three and a half years of content on there. There's so many other ways to listen. However you get your podcast, we're on all platforms. Or go to the link tree, which is SBTS Podcast, uh, and subscribe. It's all free. Remember, get yourselves to a game and support local football, whoever and wherever you're watching. And apart from that, see you at the game.